for me, I've been I've been blessed to be in the situation I am, and I just want to, you know, I just want to capitalize on all I am. I don't want to be the the eighth grader with offers that didn't pan out, or the number one dual threat in the nation that's now at a JUCO or not playing football anymore, or something like that. I think we're kind of still in awe of what's going on. It's kind of like, really, this is happening. I tell him, even if you weren't my son, the way that you play, you'd be my favorite player to watch anyway, because I just love the way that he plays. However I'm ranked or however people perceive me today, it could change tomorrow, so you just have to keep working. When he was, I can't remember the age, but it was months, I dropped this little cloth football. I don't know if he caught it because, you know, that's like some miraculous story, so I don't want to put too much on it. But um, it was, it somehow ended up in his hands and he squeezed it. And then I start running around the house. Oh my God, I got an athlete. I knew it, I knew it. I was three when I first started playing. Grew up playing football and basketball. So actually originally I, I, I pretty much fell in love with basketball. I played both sports growing up my whole life pretty equally. For a while we did both sports and we did both sports with equal amount of attention and fervor and resources <laughs> and money and travel. So we did that for a while. How football was kind of nurtured was I got him a quarterback coach and I remember that was an interesting discussion at, at the household, of, <laughs> especially when she found out how much private quarterback coach cost and then she's at <laughs> six or seven, she's like, what in the world are you doing? We have been blessed that we met his quarterback coach, his name Danny Hernandez. And Danny Hernandez did some work with this training agency called STARS. And STARS does some training and works with some pro athletes and high level athletes. And they believe, and if you're talented, if they have a pro group or if they have a high level high school group, even if you're young, you can come and play with that. So at around sixth or seventh grade, Bryce was able, was throwing to NFL receivers, and throwing to high school receivers. So, at that point, we realized that he was able to go to a higher level. We came in there a little bit naive, like we had no idea, because our thing was, all I want to do is, I don't, I don't, which is again ironic, I don't care about exposure. I just want him to be better. So in my mind, I envisioned Bryce as going to be this kind of under the radar kid that was going to go to some high school that no one heard about, and that he was going to do well because he had all this training because he'd been training with NFL guys and he'd been, it was so fundamentally sound. And so I thought that was gonna be his path. So then we go to the Ducks, and the Ducks becomes this youth football monster. My eighth grade year, I played on a really high profile team called the IE Ducks. I went to Florida to play Arizona, all that type of stuff. So I was blessed enough to get a lot of exposure. The team ends up winning a national championship in Florida. He throws the game winning touchdown pass to another player. And that's kind of when we decided that he's probably not going to play basketball anymore. <laughs> like, like, like probably the basketball, the basketball dream is going to stop. The hoop dreams will be deferred. The head coach of Texas Tech, Cliff Kingsbury, he texted one of my current QB coach at Cathedral. And he's like, you know, come down to Texas Tech. He looks really good. I want to see him throw. And hopefully, you know, if I see him throw, I'd be interested. I went down to Texas Tech, went to Lubbock, Texas, threw really well. He threw well, he actually threw very well. I was blessed enough to get an offer and it was really surreal for me, especially to get it at such a young age. Normally your first offer comes a lot later. You know, he's 5'9", 155, 160 pound kid who has a major offer from Texas Tech. And so from then on, that's kind of when all this train started going. I came in as a freshman. I knew I was going to play varsity. 
And actually, the coach told me I was going to play every second quarter. That was the deal going in. I'm going to play second quarter just to prepare you for next year. And then you're going to be good. So I played second quarter of our first game. It was kind of a blowout, so I ended up playing fourth. Same thing with our second game, blowout. I ended up playing second and fourth. But there were people from the outside saying, oh, we have this senior. He's an MVP. We're undefeated. Why are we putting in this little freshman? that's never played before. And then we have other people that are saying, oh, like Bryce, you're playing so well, you should be playing all four quarters. The Loyola game came around and they were like, oh, we've been playing second and fourth the whole time. You know, let's just put them back in the fourth. So just out of nowhere, coach is like, like Bryce, get in. I was like, okay, cool. Oh. So I get in, I do well, but we go down there, it was a good drive. And then we get a second drive, I'm on the run, like I make someone miss, I roll out to the right, I feel like a 70 yard pass. And our receiver, He goes up and he drops it at like the one. And this is us up to seven minutes left. And the senior comes back in. We end up winning off a missed field goal. And then ever since then, I played second and fourth, so. This is, this is my first close high school game, so definitely this is, this is probably the best game of my life. I was funny, my dad was the one who showed me, he told me during practice, he was like, the rankings came out. And I remember he's like, you're number one dude in the nation. He's like, let me see the profile. So I look at it, he's like, you're number one. I was like, but I'm 50 in the nation and like six in California. He's like, you're number one in the nation. It's great, obviously, I'm, 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 it's an honor. I'm really blessed to be put in that situation. But I, I want to focus on the 50, I, it's 50 something people ahead of me that now I have to chase and now I have to be better than. And I and I also learned, I have to know that uh, not to put much in the rankings. You know, it's sophomore year, so much will change. And also how some person over the internet perceives you, um, never seeing you at the same event, never seeing you play each other in real time. Uh, for me, those that 50 and that six is something that I want to focus on. So I know that there's still a lot more for me to get. There's still a lot more that I need to work on and improve. We don't really spend a lot of time talking about how great he is. <laughs> we don't do a lot of that. But what now? Um, what we do say is we do. We love him fiercely, and I'm fiercely um, protective of him. We're beyond words proud of him, and we tell him that. Things are kind of different. Um, I never thought at the age of 15, I'd be getting texts from random people saying like, oh, I look up to you, stuff like that. Oh, oh can I help you? Can I, uh, can I ask for advice? Like people that you never heard of or people that you, know, that you just run into, like walking down a mall asking, oh, where are you gonna go? Can I get a picture? Stuff like that. You never really like internalize that type of stuff until it really happens. But I wouldn't say it's annoying because every time it happens, you know, there's a little bit of you that's like, like, okay, like, <laughs> Wow, like I've kind of I've kind of came up. There's a you know there's a downside that comes with it, more pressure. There are more people that expect stuff from you, uh, people that can try to use you for stuff. For me personally, like I said, you just have to make sure you stay focused, stay humble, and remember that um, everything's conditional. What gives me a little bit trepidation is that the bigger he becomes, there's more people that you kind of have to be aware of. And there's more things that you have to navigate with him. So I'm more worried that about the people that are around him. Keeping a small circle is really important. You know, you can't trust everybody. You have to kind of step back and look at everybody for what they are, especially people who like recently enter, or will enter your life. You know, it's, it's fine to associate with them, but you have to realize what they're there for. Allowing him to be himself, allowing him to explore and express and have some uh, be an individual, but also managing who is around him and who's influencing him. Because a lot of times people want to push you out of the equation. 
It's something you just kind of learn to learn to deal with. I'm blessed to have such a great family, great friends, you know, people that really care about you. And to know that those are the people that are going to care about you, whether you're good at football, bad at football, anything like that. So just, you know, have to keep it internal. That doesn't mean that we don't want people to help and I don't want people who have, a, who have his best interest making sure that he makes great decisions and that he understands the gravity of kind of the, the situation or the, the, the place that he's in. He doesn't take that for granted and that he respects it and that he respects those around him and that he doesn't become a cliche. My dad, he didn't really have a, a father figure throughout the younger stages of his life. So I know it's very important to him to be one to me. And I mean, the stuff he does for me, the countless hours he spends, whether it's driving me places to go work out or go watch games or go talk to a coach when I was at a younger age group to go coach me, talk to other coaches. There are a lot of people that don't have that luxury in their life and I'm just so grateful to have it. Some of the things, when you have a family, some of the great things about having a family is you can fix some of the things that weren't the best in your childhood. Because my parents divorced and then uh, my father lives in Philadelphia and, and uh, my mother and you know, I live in California, we didn't see each other all the time. So I didn't have a, a close relationship with my father and he wasn't at games and all that stuff. What I wanted was I wanted to make sure with my son that we were partners and that we had a situation where we worked together. So to be able to do that with my son is beyond words. Like it's, it's, um, it's more than I envisioned. Like all this is more than I envisioned. I thought that um, I would have a son, we'd play catch and everything, would, you know, we'd watch some games together, but all this was even more than I failed, than I ever dreamed about. I was scared of a little kid, I'm not gonna lie, but it was a few years back, like it was before my eighth grade year, seventh or sixth grade, something like that. And it was like a game in front of all my peers and a lot of people that like I wanted to impress, like some friends were coming out, it was near the area. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go into this game with no fear. I played a great game, an amazing game. After that, I realized this is football. This is a sport. There's nothing for me to fear. There's no reason to fear anything. There's nothing to be scared about. You go in, you trust the work you put in during the off season, during practices, and you have to play without fear. There's a lot of things that people have doubted about me. You know, me being a black quarterback. A lot of people call me a short quarterback. Even at my age, some people look at me and say, oh, he's still 5'11 to 6 foot. You look at, oh, the college quarterbacks are a lot taller. People see me do well in eighth grade and say, that's, that's, that's cool, but you know, varsity's gonna be a whole different story. People be saying now like, oh, a lot of the name weapons are gonna be gone. Now he's gonna struggle. Now things aren't gonna go as well. It's out of my control now. He's on the football field and I have zero control. They put on the show tonight. Y'all the parade. You got hey. better smack in the ram the whole game. They don't care, they book us for homecoming. Y'all got booked. That's gonna be brothers. Be brothers. Now y'all must even hear me. I said wake him up. Shake him up. Top of make him go up. Friday nights are the most fun I have. I swear there's no better feeling. With the adrenaline, the crowd, people screaming at you whether it be good or bad, the pressure, it's just such a great feeling. But then when the lights come on and I get to watch him do what he does, it is so fun to watch him play. And it's, it's, it's literally my favorite thing in my life is to watch my son play.
Bryce? You know, if you take a step back and look in perspective of stuff, what happens today? Like even on Friday night, me throwing a game losing pick, a pick six, something like that. If I step back and realize in 35 years, like how much is this really gonna mean to me? And also knowing that I can trust the work I put in. A lot of my confidence comes from knowing that I work so hard and I deserve the stuff that I get. I need a dunk though. I need a dunk though. I need a dunk. Me and Bryce, we're in this together. This is my dude. So I have to be focused on what's going on. So I can't be in the stands talking about why or who or what number it is. And my dude is like playing. Oh, oh, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, as if things keep going as planned, I'll be blessed to have my education paid for, it, and I think that's a really that's a really big step for me. Um, obviously, I've, I'm, I have dreams of going to the NFL. You know, you work every day to be the best the best of all time. You know, you have dreams of winning Super Bowls, but going to college, I just want to get my education. I want to get my major I'm comfortable in, have a career, have a plan B. If NFL doesn't work or college doesn't work, whatever it is, that I can turn my education and then I can be happy and live a life that I want to live off that. I want him to be able to feel confident in whatever he gets into down the line, not just football. What we want Bryce to get out of football is one, we want him to enjoy it to the fullest and to play for as long as he can at whatever level it is that tells him it's time for you to get a job. Now along that journey, 
We want him to use football to develop friendships, to develop relationships, to develop partnerships, to expand his sphere of influence. So that's the end game. It's to play as long as you can and along the way, um, impact people, meet people, and develop relationships. I know it's weird for me coming from a sophomore, and I don't know how much of a position I am in now, but I want to inspire other people. I want to bring the best out of other people, whether that be through football or separate occupation. I just want people to remember that I was hardworking, and the effort that I put in and the uh, dedication I put in is what drove me.